the Taste Talk Podcast. Welcome. <coughs> Excuse me, Tiz fam. <laughs> we cough. <laughs> we cough. We cough. Not COVID. Promise. Uh, welcome back to the Tiz Talk Podcast. Episode 36. This last time was episode 35 for my 35th. Uh, this one really just got thrown together very, very quickly, but I got a returning guest, Daddy Stacks, aka Jared, because as y'all know him, is Jared, it's Daddy Stacks now, baby. Daddy Stacks, what's good, son? What up, his fam? It's been a minute. It has been a minute. The last show you were on was with Two Oak, I believe. Yes, that was uh, that was actually maybe like February, like in, March, last. No, no, no. It was like May. It was definitely May, like oh, May? six months ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I I, yeah. I like to hop on hop on a, an episode every six months or so. <laughs> Well, yeah, yeah, you know, we got the Bag Boys Discord server going on and uh, making plays there, and at the same time, uh, yeah, just, just, just still trying to run the pod. But it's good to always have a regular, you know, back on the show. And uh, two woke guys, Tiz Gang, uh, he couldn't make it tonight, but we might drop an ep- another episode later this week because it's it, if you haven't. It's almost all about the creativity these days, you know, like how can you separate yourself? And don't worry, we're going to talk about Asher Will. We are. And by the way, real quick, I want to give a shout out to my, whoa, look who joins the fucking show, man. What up? Uh, two up. <laughs> so both of y'all are in the whoa. car. I'm the only motherfucker here, like sitting at home. Y'all are in the car, Jerry. Look at a uh, big daddy stacks over here with his beautiful fucking picture. <laughs> yeah, man. What, what do we got? A fucking LL Bean catalog model or something? I mean, no, dude. That was that's actually an old picture. That was my senior photo from high school. <laughs> what are you saying? Uh, even sexier now. And then we got Daddy Stacks joining us once again, aka the homie Jared. What up? Coming from New Orleans. New Orleans. New Orleans, baby. New Orleans. Actually, you just got back there today. Oh, yeah. I, uh, I'm i fired up. I've been in the car for five and a half hours. That's brutal. That is brutal. I've done it. It's brutal. And I can't get on the Ron Z right now. Man. I'm just drinking Gatorade. That's all I'm drinking right now, Gatorade. Oh, Gatorade. I'm drinking some. Not Haterade. Gatorade. Some Mount, some Mount Gay. Mount Gay. Talking about, ne- talk about nothing two, mountain? No, okay. Mount Gay. Tua keep, keeps like just sh- disappearing into the trans like the translucence of the fucking screen. I am the omniverse. <laughs> He's the omniverse. The omniverse. Yeah. That's why you say that's what that's probably what it's like. It just like sucks you in. It's like the metaverse that we're dealing with the new Omni. Variant Omicron, Omicron. Well, we're calling it the Omni, okay? Omicron, Omicron, baby. Omicron, Omicron's kind of it's like one of those words they're trying to like make it seem scary, but it's just like at this point, like, fuck you guys, this ain't shit. We ain't scared. We're gonna continue doing our thing. At first, they had named it something else. Like when I first heard it, this thing came up very abruptly, by the way. I don't know if y'all were paying attention when this shit just like hit the fan. This whole new variant of the COVID, the, they, they were calling it new in you, the, the new variant. <laughs> All I can see is two oaks face. <laughs> Literally, it's just your face. So who uh, names these? Who names these these strains? Who names them? Who's in charge? Because I bet they they. They get a bunch of laughs out of out of making these names. I mean, it's like um, weed, you know. Well, <laughs> exactly, yeah, too low. Exactly, <laughs> like weed. Well, the Delta, they were just. It's like the hurricane season. Did they go to the Greek letters? I guess I don't fucking know. After you run through the first 
alphabet? I mean, was there ever a beta? Oh, I guess it is. It is the Greek alphabet. You're right. Yeah, it's the Greek alphabet, but there was a there was uh what there was the alpha which is the original and then i guess the beta oh, and then the uh, delta now they went straight to the the o section and then zeta's you know, it's kind of no bullshit it's like the doctor should be doing other work but instead he's out there studying just to be able to name some fucking new strain there's probably already a hundred strains of the fucking thing there's thousands oh, yeah. there's there's probably millions probably hundreds and hundreds of thousands of coronaviruses out there that they're they're everywhere like but they can't you know how that what they've said or at least from what i've under the way i understand it is it can't it has to get transmitted from which they live on bats supposedly right like this these coronaviruses these dirty bats and then they the bats bite into a motherfucking banana or and the banana falls off the tree and then the pig eats it and then we eat the pig or some shit like that you know what i mean like i don't know have y'all ever seen uh, bat soup? huh bat soup yeah that exactly have y'all seen that movie um what's it called with uh lawrence fishburne uh it, the, it's not outbreak but uh oh my god oh, yeah. Uh, contagion, when, contagion, yeah. Oh, that is that yeah. the one where at the end it like shows a bat and a monkey eat some shit. Yeah, yep. It was like the exact. Hey, oh my no, god, just bro, a bat. I'm it shows a bat. It shows a bat. It shows a bat like in a tree, like eating, like biting into a banana, and then like a fucking tree falls down or something, whatever. The pig eats it. Next thing you know, the pig ends up in god. the fucking kitchen at some restaurant. And Taylor, stew. what? What was that fucking game back in the day? I'm trying to find out. I'm trying to look it up, but it was some game back in the day. I want to say maybe 10 years ago where the objective of the game was to dominate the world and you would like infect the whole world with like a disease that you would give a name. Do you remember that game? No. Oh, at all. I have no fucking clue. Like World of Warcraft. No, dude. I don't don't know what it was. I don't think I've ever played it. Dude, anyway. I think I played it at like an arcade or something, like at Fuddruckers overall 59 or something like that. I, bro, I couldn't tell you. You don't know? You, look it up. Look it up. Um, I did. But anyways, I just want to <laughs> go off on a tangent here real quick. They, they were, so this all came about to my, to my attention and I think to everybody's attention who was on thanks, the night of Thanksgiving. I first heard about it i was at, sitting at this desk and i was on discord and somebody in one of the discord servers was saying holy shit fucking futures are super red and it's all about this in you new variant of covid that's what they were calling it at first now where the fuck they came decided to switch that to omni con i don't I don't know why. I, 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 I don't understand why they did that. I don't really think it. Omicron, Here's sorry. Thought, it was the perfect time to announce it because everybody's together for Thanksgiving. So you just put the story out there and then everybody, hey, did you hear about the new strain? Blah, blah, blah. <laughs> it's small yeah, talk. Man. It's some good small talk material. Yeah. I mean, that is exactly. So this is the first time I've actually like, basically didn't do anything for thanksgiving i kind of just had thanksgiving to myself i just didn't feel like driving to waco this time because nice. i'm going in chris i'm going in back there at christmas so i was just chilling and someone posted that and i was like what the hell and it was i was like oh you know that's just like a scare right yeah like whatever it's just like another delta or whatever well the difference between this one at least at first what freaked everybody out and what delta or beta or whatever the fuck you know besides the first one is that i think there was four countries at least four in europe that that next day went into lockdown that caused austria and somewhere else i'm like you like, pussy austria i think germany was at least talking about it uh, i don't there was australia some, these I don't think Australia. 
I don't think Australia, Australia has been super strict with this whole COVID thing too. Like talk about strict, man, my God, like they just like recently got cleared to be off of lockdown or not lockdown, but like very strict, like whatever measures have been taken this entire time. And, and now this happens. So they're probably like right back into it. And they enforce the shit out of them. Yeah, I know. It was like, it didn't even catch my attention until someone brought it up about the fucking stock market, the futures. I didn't think much of it. And man, dude, that, that next day, uh, talk about black fucking Friday. I mean, everything was on sale in the stock market, bro. I mean, the Dow tanked a thousand points, which was, I think, the most it's tanked, I believe, since Corona started. In a thousand, yeah, in a day. I, I did it. Did it do it again? Since has it done that since March twenty twenty or February twenty? I'm not sure. Well, anyways, it it did it. All big, all the indexes were down at least two percent, at least, if not more. Yeah, but how? Period. But how? How? Except for the VIX. How much can you contribute? <laughs> how much can you contribute that to the Delta variant? Because it was. Delta. There's, there's a lot of other reasons or whatever the Omicron variant. Cause there's a lot of other reasons I could see there being a sell-off around Thanksgiving and black Friday. No, 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 no bro. This was a, this was, well, I mean, when a country the size of Austria is talking about shutting down, you know, yeah. I mean, you, all of a sudden you have, you know, oil supplies up and all kinds of shit happens, you know, based off of that, that can affect exactly. across all equities. Exactly. I mean, I mean, everybody oh, freaked I mean, out. Everybody freaked out, bro. I mean, it wasn't just the only things that like you saw that we were actually doing well that day or on Friday were like companies like Zoom or Peloton, uh, any of those fucking companies. Um, I mean, uh, I, I can uh, I can I can definitely like give. Okay, so first of all, I'm not saying that that the Omicron variant had nothing to do it had a very big part in why there was that sell-off but i would say know, think probably about, about 90%. i would percent i would i would also think about how you know black friday right a lot of there are a lot of retail traders in this country who are average citizens who are you know possibly liquidating their holdings so they can pull out their cash and they can go you know spend their money on black friday that's one theory that i have it would not set the market. The entire market wouldn't sell off like that, though, because of that. No, but I, I'm just saying that I don't think it's. I don't think it's 100. percent You're probably right. I would say it's 90 percent of what happened that day. Trust me, I was in the middle of it, watching the entire thing happen. I mean, it was. I mean, I mean, the Black Friday on Wall Street, new COVID variant since Dow to its biggest drop of 2021. In the title, and obviously the other the other things getting tied in are more macro, you know, like um, interest rates and shit like that going up. You know, probably the end of next year. Um, Black Friday is usually a day of excitement in the market because people are like, what, "What's that?" You know, they kind of start gauging how much everybody's going to spend for the holidays, and yeah, and all that shit was up. So yeah. spending was up. You know, like more people shopped in stores instead of online uh, than the past. Actually, they didn't. They did not. Black Friday saw uh, less people this year than last year out of the stores. That's not what I heard. Dude, I'm telling you. I'm yeah, telling you. Yeah, I saw you. an article about it. I saw an Brick article. And mortar, it. It was Brick and CNBC. mortar is getting tough, man. Brick and mortar is getting real tough. And I'll tell you what, not in Knoxville, Tennessee. Bro, I mean, dude, they're like, out. They're out there. But I'm saying, apparently across the board. No, no, I, mean, I know. I'm just saying in general. Knoxville, Tennessee is crazy, dude. It has to be the most – okay, maybe not the, but it's got to be a top 10 mall in America as far as success over here. With I was going to say it can't be bigger than the mall of America. That in well, Minneapolis. it's not bigger. It's probably much smaller than that mall. But, I mean, per square foot, dude, it brings in – people are shopping – Monday through Sunday, I don't care what time of day in this town. It's the craziest shit you've ever seen, dude. Like, really? It's insane. Damn. I'm just yeah. much of a I don't know. I just I, I feel like I feel like every year the percentage of online versus retail is the gap is largening where online oh. is 
Yeah, I mean, I buy every, I buy out. everything. I but what I, the report I heard was more people showed up this year than last year, mainly because of COVID. I'll but pull then, it up. I'll pull the article yeah. and show you. I mean, but at least what I saw. Coronavirus, so there wasn't shit going on as far. No, as... No, I know, but their numbers were. Just, maybe I'm saying it wrong. I think it was either they were. It was less than what they were expecting, or it was, or it was what I said before. It was less than last year, but. This this article might actually talk about it. This is a fucking crazy day. Because those few when I saw those futures, that shit didn't bother me. It's like, oh, it's another fucking variant, Delta, whatever. It, you know, who knows? And then, you know, futures never recovered. Everything gapped down. Everything gapped down in pre-market. I mean, everything except for, like I said, anything that was like big during the first COVID, you know, when it first came out, like Peloton. You know, in all these like, co- like uh, Roblox, oh my God, it's going crazy. It's all those yeah. companies. It was just insane. And, and then and then the VIX is it. That was all that was up. Everything else is right. All right. So I have a question. What? For both of y'all, because I know Two Woke's very, very long term thought provoking. You know, he thinks he thinks very, he thinks he likes to think ahead. You know, he not, not completely. And and t- and Tiz, you you sort of think ahead and but also play a lot of short term stuff. What do y'all think the market is going to be like over the next half year? You know, maybe until over the next year. Um, it looks like it's beginning to be extremely bearish. I believe. I think it's going to be. Uh, I've already been seeing signs before this happened of SPY doing some weird shit. You know the. 180 day moving average is starting to kind of just curve a little bit downwards on the four hour chart. It's just all these little signs. And then all of a sudden this happened. And I was like, but it bounced back today. I mean, not it, did. Back. It, did. it didn't recover all the way, but it did. It did recover. But, I mean, it did. Uh, it showed, it showed some, I don't know. Here's my, my answer is I have no idea what the next six months holds to a year, but I do think that over the next two to three years, there is going to be enough volatility where if you hold, you know, pretty long puts that you'll print at one day, your, your shit could be down for months and months. And then one day, you know, it could be down for a year, but when it hits, it's going to hit big enough to make up for all that plus some, and then just maybe play more short-term stuff in the interim as you see fit. But yeah. um, if you're going to be a player, if you're going to be like a mover, you know what I mean? If you want to just buy some shit and hold or, you know. You also got to have the liquidity to just throw it into a leap. You know, those, those are expensive. Long-term puts is, yeah, I mean, they're all going to cost you quite a lot of money. Yeah, they just, they just sit there. So you can't, you know, the only way to get it yeah. back out is you sell it. So there is that it. problem. But um, but I still think that when you're talking about some of these stocks that are chilling around like five, six, a thousand dollars, like oh. when they go down, they drop by hundreds. So, I mean, those things are going to print tens of thousands of dollars for you, you know, that maybe cost you five or six, but they're going to print. 25 35 you know what I, I mean, mean they so, could be more than that man i mean you just never fucking know look what happened with that what tesla is. look at that tesla call bro that thing was like what the fuck that was insane well, that's the funny thing about options is you can be right and still lose right like it all depends on the time it depends timing, on premiums everything it's all about timing so that's why i don't really fuck with that shit but um i do I just <laughs> you're the one who showed me that you're the one who showed through. me fucking options and you're like oh you're fucked with that shit i got yeah. hooked at hook uh you but you I see like placing bets i like placing bets i i i invest mostly occasionally i like to play some bets you know just for the juice and the action but i don't claim to be any sort of expert when it comes to options at all you know way more about options <laughs> than i do at this point it's because so. i've also lost a lot of money learning how to fucking yeah. do that shit i and paid you, the fucking yeah. price and i still don't win all the time man and my I options win. my options game is really um elementary i have an idea and i i still i invest in options like i invest in stock i have some catalyst reason that i think something's going to happen and i'll try and bank on that i'm not really playing fundamentals uh, you're doing pattern. the fundamentals yeah i'm not playing the technical analysis like just yeah i'm 
I'm both. I bet I do rely a lot on tech on technical analysis, like the support yeah. levels. But I mean, I do. You've been, you've been hitting a lot of licks, and I have not. Right, like when the market's kind of doing this, that's not when I shine. Like I shine when the market does this or this. You know what I mean? Like I don't like this in between. Like oh shit, what's gonna happen? Nah. Yeah, and dude, trust me again. I learned my lessons. Oh man, I get it. I think if you have more than 50% or 60% of your money in equities right now that like in like where they're not liquid on a day-to-day basis, but like in, I think you're being foolish and short-sighted because you should have so many gains in your portfolio right now that you should really be like kind of selling things off and, and having that money on the sidelines in case yeah. something crazy happens either way. If you All miss right. gains, you miss gains, but to work, Cash I have a question. Cash to work, I have a question. Yeah. Okay, hang on. I'm pulling it up. I'm pulling up my position. By the way, none of us are financial advisors. We yeah, are not. Here's the, the plebe, the like smart, like be safe guy in me says, you know, like, man, shit's just so crazy right now and it's so stacked. But that's that you miss out on a lot of money that way. The shark, like, Oh uh, yeah, let's get rich, guys. Like this could go on for another with with all the money going on and the infrastructure bills and all this shit. The money could just I mean, these stocks could go to the moon even yet more, you know. So they right. could. Too woke, too woke. Oh. I have a question. Yeah. Okay, so I have a hundred point eight shares of Apple. Okay. Um I bought them for twenty eight sixty two a pop. Wow, very good. How long have you been holding that shit? Jesus. Years. Nice. And I have. Well, that's like when you say 28, and, I mean. That's, and the, that's and I have made 13,267 off that. My total gain is 459%. Um, right. How much did yeah. you say? 459%. 459%. That's Buy and hold. That's great. And, and uh, it's about, I want to say. <laughs> Sixteen thousand one hundred fifty-two dollars current value. Now, what do you think? Do you think I continue to hold this? It depends. What do you want? You know, scale I mean? out a little bit, maybe. I know, yeah. but I have. I literally bought these shares for twenty something bucks. Like, what's the point in selling? You know. You're gonna hold. Can, you're gonna can, hold yeah. Can you it's sell fractionals? Back. Can you sell fractionals of shares? Uh, like a dollar I mean, uh, amount. Well, worth, I can, like, I can. I'm sure I can. I mean, it's it's a fidelity account. Well, I mean, my the way I would look at it is, is and again, I have, we don't. I'm just what throwing is my your goal. That's that's the first yeah, question. Like, what's your target? What's your goal? I mean, honestly, I Gross. they're really yeah. I guess just like the long term, very very long term buy and hold. You know, well, if you've done well and you held it there, then just keep holding it there, but. You know, you do have to understand there's going to be, a, you know, a lot of this going on. The problem, the, the, the thing I, the, the question I have is even if there is a correction, right? You know, sure, I might, I might, it might shape pullback? up. Well, it, 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 Same it thing, I, guess. I mean, eventually there's going to be a correction and it's, and it's oh, the next 100%. one's probably, the, it's probably not going to be, you know, it, it's probably going to be a pretty serious one you know i don't see opinion. a crash i agree i, I don't I see a like crash it's, it's, I see a very... a, it's like a, it's gonna be i think it'll be similar to the dot-com bubble so something you know and I so i what friday showed was that it doesn't take very much news people have an appetite for selling right now they're still greedy everyone's a greedy little pig you know so things are going to keep moving in that direction overall but what Friday did show us was that it doesn't take a whole lot of activity for things to really go south in a fucking hurry. You know, I mean, that was a thousand points over what we've been hearing left, you know, for a year and a, two years now. Oh, variant. Oh, this, that and the other shit, you know. And all of a sudden it comes to a head just on the drop of a dime. Like, you know, yeah, like Jay said, there's it's also dope. big money behind the scenes that moves. I've been watching equities for a long time. And what Dark I've balls. always learned, what I've always learned is whatever the media says move the market is not always what moved the market. It has a big part to do with it. But, you know, you can watch a random day on fucking Bloomberg and they'll be like, oh, the Dow dropped 450 points because of some shit in some other country far away. And you're like, 
most investors didn't even fucking know about that shit, much less, you know what I mean? Like there's deep, big money pools that are moving money on a day-to-day basis that are more responsible than, you know, just one news blurb, you know, dropping the market a thousand points. I agree. I, you know? I think that's been happening. Like I've been saying about SPY doing some weird shit over the past couple of months. Like I've seen some weird drops out of nowhere, just like out of nowhere, you know? And so Here's those were just. We want to pay attention to. Here's what we want to pay attention to. And I got to find him. There was this dude. It was actually on TikTok. His name was Ziev. He's like this uh, Jewish dude in Israel and he follows cryptos and equities, but he would always say, what is the retail trader doing? Whatever the retail trader doing is going to be wrong long term as soon as they're against the banks, you know. So banks are long and the retail trader short, then shorts are going to keep getting slaughtered, you know. And so as these graphs become closer and closer, that's what we really want to pay attention to is what's retail doing and what are the banks doing? Because they're always six months ahead of the curve, you know what I mean? Always. Yeah, I mean they're the they're the institutions, the, you know, with all the fucking money. I mean, all they have to do is start selling positions off, and boom. I mean, it, well, they it, hold the position. <laughs> That's the funniest part about it is they hold the position, and they're the house. So no matter what, at the end of the day, the house always wins. The house always wins, but not even that is at, at the average of hogs get slaughtered. Now a few don't, you know, some don't, but. You know, if you want that 16K to be really liquid and feel good about being able to move it, if you have plans in the near future to be able to use cash or start a business, or, then I actually would sell a decent portion of that. Scale out. Scale out of it a little but bit. If you're just looking to have that money and it won't really mean anything to you and you're just trying to keep your nest egg and think about, you know, further down the line, then just keep it where it's at. Yeah, I mean, there's no expiration to it, bro. And anything, if, if anything, you s- just buy the dip if and scale and get a better average price, you know, for your shares. Apple's trading at like 160 right now. I know that for a fact because I day traded it today. Uh, it's coming off all time highs. Uh, so here's another thing before we get cut the fuck off here. Here's another thing, uh, real quick is I don't know how many equities just hit all-time highs like microsoft there is hit all-time highs multiple times over the past couple of weeks apple nvidia roblox uh spy tesla. i mean tesla fucking you name it dude it's crazy lucid rivian all this shit all these evs i mean it's here, when things are hitting all-time here's highs all-time problem. highs all-time highs i mean I have, dude, it's right? gonna come back down i mean that's here's the problem the... i have here's the problem i have is that if you look at the intrinsic value of all of these companies you take the book value and you find the intrinsic value of these companies okay the intrinsic value versus what they're actually trading at and what they're worth is so big and it continues oh, yeah. to grow even larger every day that's how these companies are hitting all-time highs they are not yeah. worth they are not worth what they are in reality worth. Yeah, you know? their market cap absolutely. You're I mean, 100% finding, correct. Yeah, finding it's, the intrinsic value of a patent, which is all these tech companies hold as systems and patents, is like almost impossible anyways. You know what I mean? So it's like, and then a lot of these companies don't make money. They don't make a product yet. And they don't even have a way to scale it as far as profitability that, goes. That, so it's like, crazy. It's crazy. Like uh, what's a uh, Lucid, for example. Like how is Lucid, Lucid that have that big of a market cap when they don't even have? Do they even have cars uh, on the road, or did they just deliver their first that, or something? Yeah, they they just started delivering. I'll tell you exactly why all of these have, why all of them are all. It's because the market is just pumped with stimulus money. I mean, there's just more. We've printed more dollar bills in the past eighteen months than ever before. That is true. People got their stimulus check and they put it into the market. You know, and that's part of it. But there's way more to the stimulus bills that was that just went to the people. There was like lots of money that went to corporations and shit oh, yeah. like that. For a second, but Daddy Stacks actually, uh, or Jared, uh, actually got his camera to work and he looks like a purple Smurf. <laughs> uh, but now, what we were saying basically, like, long story short, or the what the whole, the whole thing was, is 
when you start seeing all these companies hit all these all-time highs and having these ridiculous, like perfect example, Rivian IPO'd was like immediately within the first day. Um, and I think it was the biggest IPO since Facebook in 2012 is what I've ever heard. And Coinbase, and, what about was Coinbase? It wasn't no, so every from what I read, that was the biggest IPO Rivian since Facebook. Wow, wasn't Rivian a huge scam though? Rivian just IPO'd. Like no, you're thinking, you're thinking, of, no, I'm uh, thinking of what's that other EV? It was uh. It was uh, Tesla. What the fuck's Tesla's Nikola? Nikola. Oh, bro. yeah. Nikola. Nikola. Yeah. <laughs> I yeah, wanted that to was, short that. That was correct. I, I remember I, that. I, I, I remember was that. saying short this shit, short this shit, and then boom. Um, but yeah, the, no, I mean, uh, that's just what happens, man. I mean, like, it can't go up forever. It's not, I mean, like, especially that quickly. When anything goes up that fast, it's going to come falling down that fast, too. Usually. Well, I, dude, I watched a documentary on it. It's fucking crazy, bro. The CEO was bullshitting uh, the media, was bullshitting all sorts of people. The The video they put out of that 18-wheeler going down the road was put – the car was in neutral, and it was going down a steep slope, so it was yeah. moving. Wait, what? That's awesome. Wait, if you, not, you, that? you never heard about that? Well, I mean, I get the, I get what you're saying. I'm just, I yeah, lost they, it. They said, that. they said that, well, they put out like a promo video for their, for their, uh, they had one, they had one truck. Okay. That they produced. It didn't work. It was literally just a shell. It had, it did not function and it was supposed to be like an, uh, an 18 wheeler. Right. And yeah. they recorded video footage of it for a promotional video. And when they did that, they put it in neutral going down a steep slope. So it was just rolling down a hill. And then they use cinematic the other, cinematic. Here was their other scam is the only revenue. I don't know if y'all remember like, Oh, they produced like, it was like 50 grand in revenue or something. And it was, they, they just did some like unrelated shit at the CEO's house and banked it. For Are you talking about Nikola? <laughs> the Nikola thing? Yeah. yeah. There's like, I can't believe that company is still, at the boss's house. I can't believe they're still even on the market. You know, after how fucked are they? they a, yeah, they are. Still, but here's oh. the thing: what? is Rivian, Rivian, and uh, what's watch, the other watch one them get pumped by all the Wall Street bets people. They already have; what? they've done it. Oh yeah, you are. Yeah, and then what's the other one? There's Rivian, and what's the other one? Uh, Lucid. 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 So Lucid. this company is yeah. worth, you know, somewhere in the ballpark, according to the market right now, of like seventy billion. And That's then insane. Rivian is trading over a hundred, I think. So yeah. Um, uh, it might not be uh, anymore. I'm not sure. Either way, um, you know these companies are trading at multiples of what like Ford is trading for. But here's an interesting question that this actually kind of alludes to: is so I wonder what these Ford plants, all the Ford like infrastructure. Oh, there's another all time high. That's another Ford just hit all time highs. So uh, imagine, imagine this with me. You're Ford and you own these huge manufacturing plants, which is good. You need manufacturing plants to make cars. But if you switch to predominantly um, electric vehicles, what is the cost associated and how much of your built in infrastructure is now kind of obsolete? Like, I, and I don't know, maybe it's a well, big maybe they cost. transition it, they can transition their infrastructure. Well, of course, but I'm saying, what is the cost associated? Like, you know what I mean? Like, but, but you have to understand that in, that that everything holds value, right? And so, obviously, like, yeah, they they're gonna they're gonna lose money, but what can they liquidate that equipment for? You know, equipment, equipment, a, equipment. Who are we value. speaking about? Which company are we Ford, talking about? Ford, 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 Ford. Okay. Compared to these electric vehicle companies that are valued at higher numbers. Even though, can I be honest even... though? Can I be honest though? There, yeah, when lie. I think of the whole EV sector, right? And I think of the whole EV sector. Obviously, Tesla is now a proven, trustworthy company. But when I think about these other companies, who That's are debatable. Well, I mean, no, in the sense, in the sense, in, in this sense, in this sense, Tony, in the sense yeah. that they have created something that the see on the road all the time, right? I agree. I agree. I, I was just okay. saying, like, that now, was now, now, this is this is the other thing, though. Lucid, Nikola, whatever the fuck, 
other companies. I wouldn't even put Nikola. In this I, 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 no, I wouldn't even put Nikola. Whatever, in this whatever. Not even Nikola. Lucid, Lucid, whatever the other one is, right? Rivion. Rivion, whatever. Yeah, okay, uh, you okay, got whatever. Uh, whatever. Lord, whatever. Lord, 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 whatever. Lord, whatever. Lord, whatever. Lord, but no, but you also have Lord's Town I Motors. Think, I think Lord's Motors, that R-I-D-E. you are going to see in, in, the next, in the next four or five, let's call it three years, I think you will see a majority Ford and a majority Tesla. I think I think that's GM. Be the case. GM's I think you'll see too. GM. GM's the same shit. They're all doing it. GM and Ford specifically, I know more than like Dodge or anything like that. But GM supposedly will be all electric vehicles by like now. I think they'll still have the trucks, but they're supposed now, to be now let me actually let me actually give a, a little piece of mind that I've been thinking about is that you know, the dot-com era, right? Where all these tech companies started up. I think that we are in the early stages of the EV era, okay? And I think that EVs are going to become so motherfucking prevalent, you know, that you have you have governments creating bills to basically incentivize these companies, to incentivize people to buy these cars. They're going to start, you know, year after year, making it more and more difficult to produce gas-powered cars. And there's going to be this worldwide transition, right? And I think because of that, it's smart to maybe, you know, whoever, like Lucid, uh, uh, what's the other one? Rivian, Tesla, you know, if you you are a long-term investor, if you're a plain, simple investor, buy and hold these things for the next 20 years and see what happens, you know? Because I think I think that all these companies are going to share the market, and I think this market is going to grow and grow and grow. And a lot of these companies. I want to wait for a pullback a little bit here, because I uh, mean, I think I think especially with Lucid. I mean, they're the one thing people forget, and I think that you know, and I'm not saying you're wrong or right. I'm not, but the one thing people forget is is even a big piece, even a decent sized car company, a hundred billion dollars is like. That's like what you dream of, you know what I mean? Like that's a big car company. Um, so what can they do? That that money though, that money that that you know, I, I've never understood this, but that money that that market cap they have, how much of that are they able to use to invest in in the company itself and and get this thing grown? So it depends. So when a company first comes out, you know, all the shares get divvied up, right? The bank owns some, a lot gets uh, put into a public offering. The institution itself holds a decent amount. What that percentage is, is all based on the structure of the deal when the company goes public. So, you know, you hope you hope that they own a, such a tremendous amount that they can capitalize and sell like 10, 20 yeah. percent. Be holding billions hey, of I, uh, dollars. I want to I want to give a shout out real quick, though. Speaking of IPOs, I want to give a shout out to my mother, um, the company she's working for. She was one of the first corporate staff members. She spearheaded some deals with Walgreens. Uh, her company is Village Medical, and uh, they just got another five billion dollar injection from Walgreens. And they're going to basically sell off, I think, 40 percent and keep 60 percent. Don't quote me on those numbers uh, that they are going to basically release an IPO in the in the in the near future so oh, cool yeah very cool so i wanted to give a big shout out to my mom so yeah wait, big what are they uh is the, what are they ipoing under like the uh, same so the, they they will be IPO under, them, oh, under like, themselves i'm pretty sure no no this was all public and for this this actually came out a few weeks ago um this was okay. this this there was a press release on this but my mom has been a big part of meeting with you know these these banks and all of these people and and she's a she's a tied and true actually and, and shout out my godfather he's the chief medical officer and co-founder of the company um but but you know these guys are are going going to the moon and they are nice. basically partnering with walgreens um and opening walgreens locations that have village medical offices attached to them walgreens is building out the real estate Walgreens actually owns most of their real estate that they're in. And so they're forfeiting some of their space in their store. And it's going to be a one-stop shop to, you know, go see your primary care physician as well as go to Walgreens and get your prescriptions filled. Um, it's, it's, it's going to be a household name in the near future. And, you know, my mom's been working for this company for many years. And I would highly suggest that when they do IPO, you buy and hold this and, uh, and, 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 and see what happens because I, this I, is not financial advice. This is not financial advice whatsoever. Um, but you Go know, this is it. just, 
but buy it because I'm I'm telling you from from my personal, they you know they're in they're in multiple markets across the U.S. Um, they're headquartered in Chicago. They have offices in Houston, all over the Southeast Southwest, uh, going into you know the the Midwest, and and they're really expanding. and And I know who's oh, buying this yeah. company, and they're an amazing company who uh, who are who are going to to continue to grow into the future, and they have been doing this is the second deal they've done with walgreens i know i i know how much walgreens uh ceo stefan supports them and uh and and this is going to be a really really big opportunity for them and i'm really excited when is this happening this this should happen i'm not exactly sure um maybe the beginning of next year but I'm, i'm not too sure i i i i don't have the article in front of me i can't really remember but well, it's yeah, a great it's synergy. I mean, CVS has been doing like the minute clinic and I think, I think they're a little too tied in, you know, whereas this sounds like at least, you know, this is you, like you go get your physical. This is the, that's village medical. You yeah, they're, so they're it's actual just smart physicians. Old people, and, old people can go to one place. They don't have to go across town to a doctor and then back across to get their shit. You know, they can just exactly. go right there. It's and a one-stop it shop and you know, Walgreens is a household name and pretty soon with the amount of stores they're opening, they're opening thousands of these across the United States. And I think pretty soon Village Medical is going to be a household name. And I am sure that 99% of you listening to this podcast right now have never heard of them. Well, now you have, and are you're we allowed to do a lot this? more of them. Are we allowed to say this, put it on YouTube? And yeah, no, them? we are. We are allowed to do okay. this. This is, this is just, public. This is public information. Sure. Yeah, sure. no, this is this is it's public like we're trying to pump a stack. Um, actually, here. Uh, well, hold I on. Could, <laughs> I could. Village if, Medical. Guys, Google. Look. Check it out. Tiz, go on. Go on Google and type in Village Medical Walgreens or Village. You know something like that and see what see well, what comes well, up. I, the, I am. This I am. is all public information. I believe you. I believe you. I'm gonna look at it, but I, the, I, that's great. We got to move on. We got to kind of. Yeah, I'm. So, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. For yeah, going it's off fine. On it's tangent. fine. It's fine. No, we go off on tangents all the time, but it's fine. It's just like let's uh to, to, to end that quick little conversation about the EV shit. Just to put things into perspective for you, Rivian, check this out. Their market cap is $102 billion. And that's after they've sold off from their original run 10 days ago when they IPO'd. Okay. Yeah. They were above Tesla at one moment. I just did a comparison on Google. Craziness. Oh, it grew, it grew way faster than Tesla. I mean, it went from nothing to $100 billion and Without even making, I mean, it's just yeah, insane. They only delivered like the high twelve cars. The they delivered twelve cars or some shit. Totally yeah, I think the like reason that. these things get so pumped up is because people see the long term viability of these companies. You know, this is the future. But and, you're buying. I well, think this is my perspective: is you're buying the success before it happened. It's one thing if you get to buy a company that at low, right, and then you get to see it turn into Amazon. But if you buy the company at and fifty running, million, yeah. but but here's the thing, Tony. For I what? think that this yeah. is there's the you know when when Amazon when all those companies IPO'd like the 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 retail trading army I want to call it all of us retail traders. That's it the was big just difference. such a it's the 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 big difference is is that there there are so many retail traders now that if you want to get in, just at, get on like, your phone. like I'm talking like I'm talking <laughs> like let's 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 look let's look back on this podcast twenty years from now. You know, these are these are good prices to get in compared to where I, I personally have a vision where all these companies are going to go. Now, look at me. You see this right here. I'm wearing these glasses. You know, I wouldn't trust me. I'm not a financial advisor, but this is just my opinion. But but I mean, just playing devil's advocate here. Yes, I agree. Any one of these companies could be here long term. It could become a decent car company. But but. Let's they can, their market in. cap can only be so high. Like it can only say, go so say. high. That is you know true. I mean? You know, so, the, you know, the oh. amount, the amount of growth that you could get from now until then, you know, might be, might be cut, uh, curtailed a little bit because of how pumped these companies are at the moment. However, I really don't think that there's going to be like a significant better opportunity to get in and when i mean significant i don't mean it's already coming the hunts dropped already there do you mean that's a better opportunity to get in significant taylor 
it's pretty significant. I, I mean, in the I mean, in the long run, saying. in the long run, in the long run, Taylor, in the long run. I get what you're saying because what what he's saying is that right now, a car company is still an early adopter of electronic vehicles, whereas in 20 years, when it's the standard, nobody can just come in and say, "Hey, we're going to make a new electric car." The markets are too too qualified. By the time it's the standard, it's going to be an established. It, these are the key yeah. players, you know. Exactly. It would be like a Tesla. In. This is the ground floor, you know. This is why it, Tesla could come into the market of automotive gas-powered cars because they were the only fucking one making electronics. So in ten more, fifteen more years, you can't have a disruptor because it will be the same hurdle will be there. I it will to be, be too worried. established. There will be too many good brands that do this that are that honestly think but about the, the percentage of gas power when versus, you have versus electric Ford power. You and know? GM transitioning to this technology. That's a sign right there. Boom. That is a right. huge well, sign. Of course it that is. is a huge but sign. It also is more of an opportunity because as as the car companies all switch to electric, it becomes what electric car do I want? Not do I want an electric car? It becomes that's what I'm buying. So there's opportunity in that competition, but but and this is a big old fat ass but is that can Ford and GM companies who are not known for fucking keeping up with the times and being innovative and staying on Let top me, of things? Can I can I say something real quick though? This is this is the hammering point. This puts the nail in the coffin, right? Think about these EVs, okay? They've only come out recently. And think about the cars you see on the road. You see cars that are 20, 30 years old, right? You see them all the time. And why do you see those cars all the time? Because people are able to afford those cars once they have, you know, been around for that long. The older models, you know what I mean? And so these cars right now, there's a high barrier to entry to owning these cars because they're new models. They're they're close to their MSRP. And and because of that, it's really hard for the masses of people in this country. I'm talking the whole spectrum of income level in this country to afford these cars. But in you know even 10 years, a lot of these cars are going. The models that exist today are coming out in the past just few like years, anything else. They're going to become more affordable, and a lot of those people who drive those gas power cars that are a lot older are going to be able to afford these cars and are going to be able to make the transition. You see what I'm saying? So I think oh, yeah. It's, yeah. It's, that's going to happen. I mean, that's happening. Yeah, we agree, happening. I agree on all accounts of that. It's just my point is, <coughs> say Rivian, say Rivian, in their wildest dreams, they would never dream of owning probably even five, 10% of the car market. What is 10% of the car market worth? Well, according to historical data, you know, and I don't have the numbers. I've never looked it up. Well, but I mean, you... I, I know that all the car companies in the world weren't worth more than 300, 400 billion dollars just three years ago. So now you got I mean, you just, you just got to think about. Well, I mean, if you're going to think about it from that perspective, from company valuation versus the actual value of, of automobiles in this country. You know what I mean? Because if you think about the actual value of automobiles, right? Think you got to you got to look at what's the no, average no, affordable the price way. of a car in the amount of cars that exist, right? No, no, that's not correct. That's well, not this correct. is this is also a new technology and everything too. So, it's, but that's not but correct. No, no, but, so you're, no, no, you're thinking of it. Explain, in a explain. Vac- you're thinking of it in a vacuum. See, the car valuation market, right before electronic vehicle before tesla grew to a trillion dollar company just say to make it easy was or was around a half a trillion dollars for all the cars in the world okay we're talking every car that was put on the road was made by one of these major companies right to like the 95 percentile so they were making profits on selling cars to 95 percent of the public for the last you know what 50 years right Mm -hmm. So now people want to act like an EV company breaks that mold. No, that's not true because people don't all buy a car at once. You still have the cycles. You still have a profit margin on a car. You could sell a hundred million cars and lose money, right? So the value of a company has nothing to do with the value of all the cars in the country, A, but then B, 
it, it still doesn't even add up to the valuation we're talking about right now. It doesn't yeah. add up. Yeah. You're talking uh, about what they're, what they're, no, it, it definitely is. doesn't add up because, you know, these companies are selling these cars <laughs> new, right? And so, so they're, yeah, they're really selling on just and, IPO'd. And, 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 like and obviously, you know, there's depreciation of all of these cars that hit the road. Every day you drive your car, it depreciates. You know what I'm saying? So yes. the value of cars is going to be much lower. My point is that, is that, you know, just to, uh, honestly, I don't even know where my point is, but my, <laughs> my, my, my overall, <laughs> my overall point is that EVs, even though like, and trust me, I'm not a huge EV, uh, you know, advocate. This I has turned into I an EV podcast. I, I think guys. that, I think <laughs> that in order, in order to, in order to, you know, produce, uh, electricity there is a lot of fossil fuel burning as we know you know you got to burn coal to basically produce electricity and so i really don't see it as clean energy or cleaner energy even though it is significantly but it's still it's, uh, it's a lot of it's, the, the, the battery know, i'm not i'm not this I, I don't i don't support evs for for necessarily the environmental but as an no, investor it just is coming it is coming and it, it will is coming come it is coming yeah, no, we, it is we all coming. agree with that we yeah. all agree with that but i just i just i just want to challenge anybody out there especially y'all too but anybody in the whole tis talk nation especially y'all too if you if you want to look into just say one company sold every car in america okay just sold every single fucking car what would that using traditional valuation methods yes what What would their what would their intrinsic value be at at a price to earnings of 30 what would their market cap be i challenge anybody to to even try to come up with a number over one and a half trillion dollars. Just, I dare you. And you won't, you won't be able to find one viable way that a company. Now, what is the actual combined (coughs) market cap of all of the companies right now? It's, I mean, I I have no fucking idea. I don't know. We don't know. I'm not doing all this. I don't have this in front of me, but I guarantee you Way the fuck up there. Truly. I guarantee you this. If you just take all the traditional companies, Toyota, Ford, um, GM, uh, you know, all the big boys that were out there. Like I said, before Tesla, we're probably worth somewhere in the neighborhood of five to six hundred billion dollars altogether. And that's even probably high. Um, (laughs) Not counting, you know, not counting Caterpillar and semi makers, just cars. Um, Tesla is now valued over a trillion dollars. So there, that company is already worth like double what every car company in the world was worth like three, four years ago. You see, what and I'm what saying? does that and what does that sig- signify to what? It signifies um, people who have lost sight of metrics and are just following the herd and going with the crowd. It also follows a. Signal. Okay, but aside from that, what do you think it signifies? And, and that's, okay. that's actual. Let's hang on, hang on, hang on. To, we're getting somewhere. No, no, we're getting somewhere. We're getting somewhere. We're getting somewhere. Wait, wait, we're getting somewhere. This is this is really good. No, 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 Taylor, this is really good. Go ahead. I'll tell you what it signifies on multiple levels. Okay, number one, the valuations are way out of hand. We're in like a tech bubble of all things tech. Like this makes the original tech bubble, the dot com bubble, look like a joke. Oh yeah. Dot com, I've dot looked at com. the charts. Look, at, it's bad. It's bad. But here's it's what the, the difference is. Is now, what, dot, what about when com, you adjust for inflation, though? Just listen. So, dot com, I'm talking about adjusting. price to earnings. It is, so, it is inflation adjusting. doesn't matter. Price to earnings wise. So, we're talking about dot com companies were mostly service based when we were, when we had the dot com bubble. It was like a, you know, like eBay, PayPal. It was mostly banking transactions online. Now, yep. tech means search internet. engines, yeah. like tech, uh, yeah, search yeah. engines. What was that one? Net, Netscape, like, data yeah. collection, data yeah. collection, you know, was a big part of it. So, check this out that's what the dot com bubble was about. And, and a lot of those companies are now the largest companies in the world, but 98 percent, yeah, of like, look, Yahoo, they all flopped. Yahoo, all flopped. Yahoo, you can't even trade Yahoo anymore. Yahoo was a, was a public company at one there point. There you go. Right? And that company, okay, I, they, think it's, I don't I know if they got bought there out. Be, or there there might be a there. correlation. There but might keep be a listening, correlation. Keep listening. Keep listening. And so now we're in a tech bubble 
where it's not surface-based. Any product right now that can claim that it has a tech component, whether it's a car with a fucking screen in the middle and it happens to have an electric battery <laughs> or or if it's a fucking, um, I mean, I don't know, just name like a Peloton, a fucking recumbent bike. Now, who do you know right that now? owns a Peloton? I don't, I, I can't name one person. No, but, and that company is valued after a huge hammering hit at like $50 billion. Like, dude, that's after it tumbled. Like, you can't, so that's that's the kind of shit we're talking about right now is where companies that make like just a basic ass product can, if for some reason people- And there are so ass. many companies that do yeah. what Peloton does and there are treadmills that have live instructors. That's a that's a real yeah. thing in the fitness industry. But, but you can't tell me- but- they that, took that it to the next like level Nikola. before everybody else did. You know? No, you they, brought, just, you no they, just start, they just start name brand in the market. That's it. Listen. I really believe. They are so pumped, Taylor. Well, I, I, okay, I, I, all right. let's not get on fucking Peloton here. Let's just let's but, move. But I'm, sticking, I'm trying to stick to my Okay, point. hang on. Know, let him go. Let him go. Let the man Let the man. I'm not preach. fucking it's, saying it's, Now I'm like losing track. But here, so here's preach. the point. So you have any, so now the tech bubble encompasses all products, anything you can think of that can have a screen put on it. People consider like tech all of a sudden, like, like, you know, like fucking tech. I don't want to go off on another tangent, but like what even defines tech? <laughs> no, well, exactly. At this point, it's, it's the metaverse. The sauce. It's, it's, lost yeah, it's in the we're metaverse. in the omniverse. We're in, we're in, in, the, the, omniverse. We're in the omniverse. <laughs> Welcome to the <laughs> omniverse. Omni, Omni, sorry, the omniverse. The omicron verse. Oh, Ami, so, Ami, 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 fucking warm michael Buffett. barry I, I think we're on i think we're on the crohn's verse because we're all about to have crohn's disease and the market's about to take a big fat shit that's what i think we got <laughs> so I, but i don't uh, care who they are the i agree with the market they part can't tell me they can't tell me a fair evaluation i'm not saying it's too low for the next third a lot of people that love tesla make the claim that tesla is not a car company it's a tech company that will do a lot of other things. Cars is just the catalyst. Now, Tesla yeah, has, there are some aspects of a Tesla car, like the, the self-driving aspect. There are a lot of things that they're pretty fucking good at, if I'm being but, honest. But hear me out. So, so um, government where, contract shit. Where I mean, do you go from there? Like when we're just high in the sky, oh, they're going to invent shit that they haven't even invented yet. I mean, that, I've heard that from a lot of people that love Tesla. Oh, yeah, they're just they're like the future. They're going to do everything. Uh, you know, and maybe they will. I'm not saying they won't. But when you're investing like that, I mean, it's like, you know, it's just crazy. I mean, <laughs> I mean, Tony, I think a lot of people, Elon Musk is just such a fucking like, I mean, people revere him as a god. You know, like yeah, people, he's like the, the real him. the real life Tony Stark. Iron That's Man. what I'm saying. We're in it's the, a, yes. it, what Elon touches turns to gold. You know, we're, and, we're in the the era of like you know, and, and things go in cycles. I'm sure the world's been like this before, but it's like so Tony. We're in the era like, of virality. We're in the era of virality. Everything's and going Musk viral. Is viral. Musk well, yeah, is very that, viral. Well, information is available immediately. Like immediately now, like you don't even need to like it's it just you get getting on your phone what spreads, or your watch that is ultimately what has value in this I mean, world. Talk about and jumping the like it's, on the market is people have been wrong, including myself, about Tesla me for too. ten plus ten years now. And I so me too. the beauty of the market is is that yes, I was wrong in the beginning, but somewhere along the line. Maybe I'm not wrong, right? And I think we're way past that line. I'm not saying that I, I'm not making the claim that I know. But what I'm saying is the line has been crossed, uh, you know, probably like five, six hundred billion dollars ago. The line was crossed. Um, and and what are these companies like Rivion and, and these other guys going to do? When all these big guys start pumping all these electronic vehicles on the market at the same time, which is now, can yeah. they compete on a cost basis? Like, can I they think really they can. I, I think it's all going to play into what kind of PR these Is companies get, what, what tastes and preferences are, you know? I think that's what's ultimately going to happen. But how do you know 
what the management of Rivion or any of these other companies even looks like. Who's running these shows? That's so that was my point, Tony. If you can learn anything from Nicola, right? It's that just because that was a shit show. Just because just because the herd like, is moving one way, you need to take your little fucking uh what are those bionicle, whatever that fucking magnifying glass. You need to take your little magnifying glass. You need to look in there real close and you need to look at the financials of these companies. You need to look at who's running these companies and you need to find out actually what is going on. You need to have the clear picture of what these companies are doing. And to get back to my shout out to my mom, the reason I'm confident in giving that shout out is because I sort of have like, I, I, I have seen this for years. I understand what this company is doing from a firsthand perspective. (laughs) And I know who's behind this shit, right? And that is why I am, you know, so confident because I know what's going on behind, you know, whatever, not even behind the scenes, just in reality. Okay. You don't know that about these EV companies, you know, they're kind of behind a hidden veil. You don't. And so you got to peel back the layers and you got to understand what are these companies? Who are they? That goes they beyond do? just EV, man. I mean, that it goes, goes in everything. Oh, but, but I think it's I think when it comes to these mm. quote unquote virality plays, that's what I want to call them now. These virality plays where the herd goes one way, where you know the idea of EVs or whatever it might be, right? Where all these things are just big, massive topics in society, right? I think yeah. that there are a lot of people who can take advantage of that, and and they can play they can play the media, they can do this and that, right? And you really got to understand before you make a very long term guess on one of these companies, you got to understand who they are. You really do. And you got to yeah, figure out I, how, I the, how you can best do that. Of course. Most people, don't, most people don't look up the management when they look into a company. But let me tell you one thing Nikola is the perfect example of where we're at, though. And let me, let me dive into this. Okay, everyone, I got to so stop you. I have to wait. stop you because we're get we're, we're pause. How right? many minutes do I have? Three minutes. Hang on. Pause, now. Pause, pause, now. Pause. So Nicola, no, it, it keeps rolling. Nicola, right and then and then DWAC, Digital World Acquisition Holdings. They, they go they go hand in hand for what the market is today. Nikola, oh, yeah. what did they do besides a press release that said electric vehicles, 18 wheelers? Yeah, there you go. Buy that shit up, run that bitch up to sixty billion dollars or whatever the fuck it went up to, 140 yes. billion. Okay, digital world acquisition. They don't have. They don't even have a social media app yet. There's no value. And, in that could, there's no value. They, in that. What, they what just they say? They, to have the press, they have a press release that just basically says, uh, "Truth social media app is going to take over for Twitter and Snapchat." And then, um, and then their little DWAC cloud computing is going to take over AWS. I mean, it was literally just a chart with arrows pointing at their enemy companies. With no business model, no very, product. Very, no Trump, product. very Trump-like, I would say. That hey, listen, up. listen, right? Virality, okay? It's all virality. And but you can't make that argument and then make the same argument about investing in EV startups like they're the now, future. Now, here's There's the no thing, difference. though. Here's the thing, though. It still is viable, that. right? Because because at the price they're at now, you know, some may flop, some may win, but the winners are going to way overshadow whatever you lost at this point at these prices. In my opinion, I mean, te- Tesla's basically always I don't they, they're going to be not all not all. Okay, we can go on a whole tangent on Tesla like we did last time about how government, you know, they're like the kind of company that'll be fucking government contracted and shit like that because they have that yes. kind of crazy ass technology. Get it? We don't even need to go back down that one. Uh, yes. Hey, what I was, what I meant to left. say was, I know, I know. What I meant to say was, <clears throat> Tesla has already established themselves into this. They ain't going yes. anywhere. They're not getting yeah. beat out. Like they are the pioneers. They're the trailblazers of this technology, and they're they've. I don't know how long it's taken them to get to whatever they're valued at now. Like what is it, one point something trillion? It I don't even yeah. know. But anyways. Um, that's just that's what I meant to say about that. Tesla and, is the one albatross that you could be right. The rest of them, they have no business, even right. if things go swimmingly well, being valued at one hundred fifty billion dollars. So you oh, invest yeah. now at one hundred, and it runs to one fifty, and you got and you were right on something like that. That's you can be right on. A, I just got one more thing to say, and it's it's pretty much 
Evie's got these fools blind like Stevie because you just can't you just can't go in blind. No numbers, and that's what I think everybody's doing right now. Numbers don't matter. Uh, Long term, they fucking matter. Uh, Investing in Evie's got a blind like Stevie. I mean, that's basically <laughs> the, to to sum all that shit up, right? Like. The, the EV sector has been insane for, and it comes in waves or it has been at least in the past 12 months or even probably a little bit more. I mean, I know like yeah. the, the Neo wave, you had Lee and it was, Neo and wave, it was workhorse and, and workhorse Nicola. is getting clapped right now. So bad. And then like, it, was, it, was, it was workhorse, then Nicola and then Ram. And then it was Neo, Lee, X Ping. That was my dogs right there. No, I know. I that oh, was that was God. that was that was a year that was a year ago. I'll never forget it. Yes. it was on Thanksgiving when I jumped into I started playing with those options and I got on that option, that Neo option trade made like my first thousand dollars. I was like right. going nuts, you know, Neo? like all that. Yeah, that was Neo Neo. got me paid. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that was my first real win in the options market, right? So like I've been taking losses, little losses, you know, like hundreds. Boom, you know, I hit my thousand dollars. I was like, fuck yeah. And then, like, but hey, you know, held what? it too long, held it too long. And then, uh, it was the buy the rumor, sell the news shit. And like, I can't, I just didn't yeah. sell it in time. And I basically went into the negative at that point. I lost all yeah. the profits. Hey, so the- you know what I'm saying? You know what I'm That's saying? So, up. like, like, like if I'm you know, Snoop Dogg, this is the Snoop Dogg play up, play a mentality right here. But you know, if you're a real player, <laughs> you're gonna you're gonna you're gonna keep playing and if you're not a real player you're gonna be blind to the ev like stevie wonder yeah exactly if you're a man. real player you're gonna play the cycle you're gonna play <laughs> the waves you said we bounce and wavy out here all right if you're a real player we gonna get in get out get, you... in, get out get in get out get it and flip it flip are it, you reading it, this spend it, something? cut it and flip it she sounded like a retard. <laughs> okay. Oh my god, pimpalicious. Uh, yeah. No, that was great. Um, the yeah. But anyways, just, just all right. With all that being said, the market is one hundred percent super pumped and juiced up right now. I mean, the premiums on just the loan on oh, some of these motherfucking options is insane. It's pumped to the tits. It's ridiculously pumped now. It's pumped what, like the Michelin man. Like the Michelin man. Yeah. Uh, the crazy thing is, is going back to kind of where all this whole started this from this whole Omni Omicron strand of COVID that has shook the world again, or it made a rumble. You know, the market got crushed that day. That was in, and I was the, the Dow, what I say went down two and a half point, almost a th- two and a half percent thousand points. Boeing is one of the larger companies within that index dragged down like 8% that day or some shit. I wasn't in any positions except for some reason earlier that week, I had decided to buy one Boeing put for $64 that expired that week. Cause somebody called it out on a discord server. I wasn't very confident in it. So I bought one, just one to say he's going to roll the dice. No, that's them. not even a rolling dice. Me or the, I usually pick up multiple contracts, even weeklies, like I'll scale whatever, but this is, it was just, I don't know, man. It just didn't seem right. But anyways, that one contract market was closed on Thursday. Friday was a half day. That's three hours of trading, dude. That's it. The market went so bad that it, that contract open it closed worth $8 on Wednesday when I bought it for 64. I sold and- it at the peak or the the bottom of that three hour period i was so deep in the money i can't i i can't exercise that i i maybe i could have been boeing's expensive 100 shares like yeah trading. so the yeah. option went from 68 dollars so to eight well no it went to, from actually if you would have bought it on wednesday it would have been eight dollars and turned it in if you sold it when i did at the very bottom 830 yeah. fucking 830 dollars so like the 600 that 64 bucks i got lucky that contract expired that day and it was way out of the money but it yeah. was like it was like a 12 percent return for 1200 return for me but if anybody had bought it at eight 
dollars on that Wednesday. It was like in it, it was hundred X. Hey, yeah, tis, hey, tis, tis, hundred X. Tis, I've been I've been wanting money. I've been wanting to to do this on your podcast for a bit because I guarantee there are some people listening right now who don't understand how options work. No, we've already Can gone over explain? options. You have well, yeah. look. Yeah, okay. we can't do that again. Yeah, we've done so, it too many times. It's... Let me. Oh, fuck, I had a great. Oh yeah, hey. I'll put hey, links in the bio. If, if I had a question for you, how would you go about finding this data on Sell Off Friday? How? What percentage of that sell off was institutions, and what percentage of the buyers today were retail? That I'd really like to know. I can find. I can look some of that data. Up. I would um, really like to know, man, because that is when these little sell-off days happen, if it's all institutions, that's that, that's that balance I was talking about where institutions are long and retail short. And then they do this. Wham. That's when the fucking, that's when it's going to happen, man. That's when it's going to pop. Like, let's see. Pop. I mean, let, let's, this and, and they use these big sell-off out. days with these bullshit news stories. Oh, that's why it dropped eight percent, two and a half percent. No, it's because we're fucking tapering out. We'll let you build it back up, and we'll take it the, again. They got, they got, and the big, when the, they have the big positions, you know. And when that balloon pops, though, they won't be holding the bag. Everybody else will. Well, oh, when that man. balloon pops, then it's like a you know a domino effect, right? Oh, price is fucking going down, down, down. Sell, 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 sell across all the market, you know. Of well, course, because the big, <laughs> the big bad tank ain't holding anymore. They're not holding it the was bag. A big, it was a. I mean, it was an overreaction 100% what happened. I you mean, see, the, I, the banks, they get the bag and they flip it and they tumble it, right? The reason why. It gets down the retail line and eventually they fumble it, right? You know what I'm saying? Yeah, they don't mix and tumble it. Yeah. <laughs> they flip it and tumble it, right? They tumble the it down the line and, and then eventually and they fumble shit. it. They fumble it, right? The retailers fumble it. So, exactly. Yes. But at the same... <laughs> uh, what uh, I've got you guys lost me there for a moment. Like I was going to say something that I had a comment and then I, well, totally, you said that you could look that up. You said you had, ways that's what to I'm doing. That right. That's what I'm yeah. doing right now. Um, I'm looking at that is the data, man. That's the data. So now this is, I, I'll share my screen real quick. I feel like you'd have to dig and dig and dig to find all that out. Yeah. But I mean, I can at least share my screen for just a moment. And let's see, look, check this out. I think by June well, of next year, whatever that percentage is right now of long banks, long retailers short, I bet you, I bet you a thousand dollars by June of next year, that graph is flipped and they're ready to fucking drop it off a cliff, at least in the short term. Um, hold on a second, man. How did I and then the chop will set in. Uh, See, the thing is, too, well, who knows when the bank entered? Who knows what so, who, how much they're on? So, okay, you wait, guys, up. can you see my screen? Yes. This is, S, this is SPY. This is the ETF that, that you know, follows the S&P 500. This is the sell-off on a four-hour can, four candles, okay? I can go on a daily, and it might even make it look even a little bit more real. You know, you can see this, right? Like, so... This is insane. I mean, you see it happen kind of more frequently here. This is the 180 day moving average right here. Okay. This, this is the 20, the five and the 20 uh, EMAs, but this is starting to bend. I, yeah, it, that's kind of hard to say though. That's kind of well, hard to say. I'm, I'm just, I'm, I'm just saying. I mean, until it, it, until it hits about a flat line, it's kind of, it's kind of difficult. I to understand. Really, give any definite, saying. definite but, opinion. By then, it's too late though. By the time that thing flattens out, it's already down ten percent. Right. Yeah. I mean, when this thing t- here, look, let's, let's look, let's look back at. That's uh, the problem. Real, real that's quick, what's so sexy. Crying. That is what's so sexy about puts. Is because when the shit drops, it drops so fast that it's just like making it rain. But all right, so two woke. Hey, two hey, what, here's, what you... here's Corona. Look, this is what's what this is what on a daily oh, chart. Oh, oh, oh. On a daily, it sold off like crazy, right? They like tried to recover, right? You look here's the 180 day moving average, right? So it's it, it's getting to that point, you know. And this is a lot of robotic algorithmic trading too, by the way. So they they. they these robots, these algorithms kick the fuck in when this EMA gets touched by these daily candles. 
big time. Uh, but what I'm getting at is, is so, I mean, with SPY, it's fucking hard as shit. I mean, it's constantly just going in an upwards motion, right? Yeah. But you're starting to kind of see, and it, it does its thing. I'm not saying it's going to come crashing down here. Like, maybe corona now here's where i might be really start interested. to see Hang on, taylor this is where i'd be really interested here's, to see what here's happens. what i was Hang gonna on. say look this is here's here's your order flow distribution to oak uh it doesn't say exactly who but it's saying large big time large orders were being outflowed by the for over do you know what the minimum is to be considered large actually it like- was all, well I, actually no i don't know but actually they was all large basically uh yeah i mean that's and, yeah, on, and on the end and on the end flow which generally yeah. makes you think it's at the very minimum hedge fund smart money and at the big maximum it's big bank you know um trying to start tapering out of things while they still have that upward momentum of retail because they know that they'll hold as long as they're told to Real quick, just... as you see more and more signals, there are going to be more and more sell offs, and the the uh the amount of time it's going to take for things to decrease is going to be even even shorter. I think that stuff is going to start selling off faster and faster, and before you know it, we will literally be in a you know whatever day of the week term you want to give it, right? What like a like a black. Tuesday, like whatever, whatever the, you know, like the, the oh, Tuesday. well, I yeah. mean, it just so happened if this happened on Black Friday. I mean, I even made a uh, comment in the Discord over the day. I was like, it's like, shit, everything's for sale, man. Everything, think, all stocks yeah, and everything. cryptos on sale, all of it. I, I, all of I it. personally think that the market will be pretty chill until we start getting closer to the Fed actually doing something because until interest rates become a real threat of going up in the near future, there's nothing. There's literally no drag, you know what I mean, except for news stories. So whatever they want to tell us and manipulate on a day to day basis is is what they want to tell us and manipulate on a day to day basis. So we and that shit in the, but with the once those interest yeah. rates start ticking up, not in the very beginning, but they they take a hold and they slowly start putting pressure on the tops of what can actually happen, you know, as far as just keep going to the moon. And that's when it's going to start going from, you know, this slow, steady up to a chop, chop, chop. And then when the bad news mixes with the chop, that's when you get the big fucking drop off. Here, right. Woke, I like to I say this all the time to my friends, you know, days turn to, days turn mm-hmm. into weeks, weeks turn into months, months turn into years. And that's just how life goes. And, you know, as we go day by day, week by week, month by month, stuff starts to happen in different perspectives. Right. And so mm-hmm. I, I really, I really do, do agree with you. Yeah. yeah I mean, I, I 100% agree with what you're saying. I mean, we've been talking about this shit for since Corona basically started. I mean, we, we were a little ahead of ourselves. Now I did sell the fuck off, but I mean, the stimulus brought everything back. Well, I mean, you know. We, we really didn't even get ahead of ourselves. It was just the missing ingredient of when is the fed actually going to do what everybody knows that fed needs to do. Yeah, which is it, fucking. I mean, you can't just live in an interest-free bubble zone in our type of economy. It just does. It's not real. It's just it's bullshit. And uh, you're right. Absolutely and that's right. what we're just missing that little sprinkle, that little bit of that little bit of Jay. Not, they gonna take. Well, you know? speaking of Jay Powell, he so he did remain in in seat. He didn't get. Uh, was it brain on yeah. or whatever? He, so he's staying. He's not going anywhere. Well, he does uh, whatever about, he does. What? Uh, all yeah, the I know. But they were did. saying they were. They were, seemed like it was sort of close for. I mean, until the last minute there. I mean, I I was pretty sure that he was going to stay, but there was a lot. The market was just kind of just sitting still, just waiting, waiting. Here's, for here's that our decision. homework assignment. Here, here's our homework assignment. Okay, all together. You you probably know how to get on this track quicker than I do, but you can tell me where to look and I'll start digging. Telling you, six months before the first interest rate increases, you're going to see the banks are going to be out of these long positions. I'm telling you, they're going to be out of these long positions. They know. And that's when we need to start buying these long-term puts. I don't care if they cost six grand a piece. That's when you buy them. 
But we can't we miss the got a, <laughs> you look, I have an even bigger you question, do have to, you What do, do you have think to watch this the means premium for the prices. overall the- economy, for the overall well-being of people in the United States? What do you think this means? Do you think that people are going to – do you think that there's going to be a lot of trials and tribulations? Or do you think oh. that people are going to sell off, take their profits, and and run? And, and yeah, everyone's going to be about, okay. You're talking, Both. Both. Retail traders never take their profits and run. They always lose. You always got to remember that the herd gets slaughtered. And so there, there, there's a few outliers that make money, but the retail trader is who loses when the shit hits the fan. Unless they just continue to hold and ride the waves. But if they're like, you know, living and dying, um, yeah. they're going to die. But no. the, my, my point in saying that is, is that, um, uh, shit, I can't even remember what I was saying. But the, you, oh, oh, yeah, you were asking what's the long term. Wall Street doesn't really affect Maine. I mean, it does. They're connected. But your average American, there's too many crystal balls that you'd have to be able to see is, when the Fed increases interest rates, does that actually curb growth? Do we flatten out inflation? If, if they increase interest rates and inflation continues to rise, then they're going to have to increase interest rates again. And then if inflation still isn't under control, then these higher and higher interest rates start really curbing growth. And you could go through a 10, 15 year period where nothing fucking happens. And welcome Let to me the- give some actual good so, advice, uh, though. Let me give some actual good advice. And by the way, I'm not advice. a financial advisor. Advice. I'm not a financial advisor, but this is there my you. opinion, actually, right. not advice. This is my opinion. You know, I have a friend who bought a lot of raw physical gold and silver before COVID happened. And when COVID happened and, and, the, and inflation started to rise, Gold and silver, you know, maybe half a year ago, a little bit more, when all when people started to realize inflation started to rise, gold and silver shot up. And so what I'm saying is, is if you really need a kind of minimal way, in a sense, to hedge whatever the economy does, especially with inflation and the inflation we've seen, you know, it doesn't hurt to buy a little gold, buy a little raw silver, keep it in a safe, two, locked up. Two oak. Can talk to you about that shit all day, bro. He's been collecting that for a minute. Yeah, I got a lot of silver and I got platinum. I got a little gold, but not not as much gold as I'd like. But um, I personally think unless you have a lot of money, um, I I like to talk options and equities because it's fun. I just like gambling on that kind of shit. That's because it is my kicks out of it, and and I like long term investing. But but I do think most people will be better off when the shit hits the fan, cash is king. When times are like this, cash don't mean shit. You can go get free money from the bank. But cash is king when the shit hits the fan. So, you know, just... Sooner or later, when when does it become... Now, what happens when the country less and less loses valuable faith in the, because they in keep the U.S. Printing dollar? The what happens when dollar. we lose faith in the U.S. dollar? What happens? And well, the thing is, the, you know, the, you know, what keeps the U.S. dollar. You know, the you know that keeps the, my opinion. That. It keeps the U.S. dollar pretty as much as money as we have printed. Like I said, eight in the past eighteen months, it's because it's the dollar is like accepted in every fucking country. Basically it's like the standard of for all currencies oh, that are measured. All the United States military. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. Right. Well, so, you know what I mean? Yes. It's the, yes. So, it's what the dollar stands uh, for, I guess. I don't worry about the U S dollar be, be, not being the global currency for at least a long, long time. But um, the problem isn't that it's the pressure inflate. Because you have to understand, while we're printing all this money, so is every other fucking country in the world. You know what I mean? So it's all relative. I don't know, though. Are they? Are they, though? Every single one? Like, we are on a fucking rampage of printing. I guarantee you, if you look at the EU, it's very, very Why don't they have their problems? I know that. I mean. Yeah, I guarantee you. a bunch of countries, though. It doesn't help. People don't understand this, is that. A strong, yeah, a strong, uh, you know, if the Chinese don't want their money to go up in value compared to ours, that's not what they want. That that goes against what they need as a country right now. So if we're printing money and deflating ours, then they're going to artificially or truthfully deflate theirs because they they want to sell to us. So it, it's good for them to have a cheaper dollar than we have. So 
They're spending just as much. Exactly. Uh, yeah. well, it all also goes into it all goes into import people. export. You know, they're exporting. I'm sorry, one point three billion. I know. I know. I mean, I get it. It makes sense. I was just, I was just talking out loud, right. asking that question. It hurts the lower class and middle class. You know what I mean? Because that's what I worry about in this country more than anything. Is what are poor people going to do? They're already on. Uh, you know, people don't realize that's really what differentiates the first yeah. world from the third world. It's not the rich. That's part of it. That's the part they want to sell you. But what really differentiates, what are the poorest people in your country doing? Shit, you go to a shithole country, you go to the nicest area, it's baller. You feel good, you know what I mean? For the most part, there's a few countries that that doesn't actually happen. But, you know, we're talking about real shitty places. But you go to fucking, I don't care where you name, for the most part, there's a nice area for ballers. The poor folks in your country are what dictates yeah. how the livability is in it. If people can't eat, you're going to see crime going through the fucking roof. Oh, yeah, you're going to see all, all these anar- malls. Chaos, anarchy. That's where it these all malls, starts. These malls are getting looted right now. And I'm not trying to make a bigger deal about that than it is. Because right now it's just isolated incidents. But when motherfuckers feel like they got to rob a Target or a Walmart just for the groceries, shit, that's when shit's real. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, uh, and that's what I thought was, you know, when the whole, when Corona first came around, the, the lockdowns, I was like, yeah, remember when all the rioting really kind of kicked off right there the after George yeah. Floyd? I mean, I thought I was like, that's it's coming. Like, you know, but it never really I mean it got bad. Don't get me wrong. It got bad on both sides because then the fuck then the other, you know, when Trump was out, they fucking stormed the capital. Yeah, like, and what the that, fuck is going on right now? It's like Chris. The, number one, it, it, the funniest but, thing is the number one thing that makes you like hopeful is also the number one thing that gives you fear right now is like where are all the low to middle income wage earners like they're not working like people i can't tell you how many companies are like three four five people short of their normal staff because they can't hire anybody which is good well well, you know what's the crazy and not to catch you off but that's it's true they companies have literally been forced to raise their damn minimum wages yes. or their wages but the problem is inflation is offsetting that that wage increase to the point where people are like this still doesn't make sense i'm not gonna fucking yeah, exactly do it. that's what's well, happening what are, they, what are they doing how are they not working at this point because unemployment all the extra unemployment is over there's still some programs out there that are, you know but nothing I mean, like what they nothing like what it was the uh, hopeful yeah. thing about that is if the economy keeps humming and jobs you know like you start getting better and better jobs and shit there's people there to work them at least you know it's not like you're yeah. capped out on that so there's room for growth there um but there's also the other side of that coin is if people, if that trend continues, then what the fuck? Like, I mean, what do you even do in that situation where you don't have workers to work jobs that are available? I mean, you know, Rome fell too, bro. Yeah, but I mean, <laughs> I mean we're not there yet. But I was just fucking around. But. No, you're right, though. You're absolutely right. But it's just so crazy right now that, like, nobody can hire people to do any like normal jobs, you know, that we take for granted. It's true. I mean, it is a, a labor, what do you call it? A laborers market. Yeah. Labor shortage. I mean, they're really, well, yeah. Is. I, I mean, yeah, they, they get they, Yeah. I, I, I don't know how long they can continue. There's 10 cities popping up everywhere. There's more homeless people than us. I think there's ever been. But are they it's just probably- checking out? Are they just checking out? I don't know. No, I mean, I'm not. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying I don't know, but I know that that's, that's an increasing issue. Lots more homelessness has come about all this for sure. In the middle of the most baller market of all time. Yeah, the market's on fire, but it's, it's yeah. It's, see, that's what I'm saying. That's where that's the difference in Main Street and Wall Street, right there. Perfect. Yeah, I mean, perfect. You know, yeah. not to get too existential. They're offsetting, and when they start offsetting a little bit too much, that bubble will burst. That's what's so funny about people bitching about $15 minimum wage is like, bro, it's already here. If you're not paying people that, you don't have workers. Unless yeah. you're in some podunk, shitty town where you basically have captive labor because they can't afford to move and they're stuck in fucking West Virginia and got to work at your shitty gas station for $10 an hour. But 
in that location, ten dollars an hour might be fine because you only got to yeah. pay three hundred bucks a month for your rent. So it depends you know, on your also. where you're at too. Yes, yeah, yeah, obviously, but, it's like in New York or California. Obviously, you'll be spending a lot more money, so your money's not going to be worth worth as much. But yeah. I think we got the point across here is what Tiz Gang is what we're really saying is is just be prepared for some kind of pullback correction. And that's going across the board here, not just the stock market. I mean, we're talking about the economy too. I mean, we're seeing it, inflation, supply chain problems. The market's still on fire. Everybody's hitting all-time highs, but yet there's a lot more homeless people. Things aren't that great. But so the I, like I said, when they start to offset too much Main Street and Wall Street, that's when the bubble burst happens usually. Yep. And, uh, uh, unless it's a financial crisis, which was a fucking big old criminal fuck up with the banks from fucking thirty years prior, and it just came crumbling down. Almost took the world with it. Fucking greedy bastards. Yep. Oh, okay. Right. Well, Tiz hey, gang, that's. I don't. I don't want to. I don't want to derail a train, but I think it's time we transition. I, tell me about it. Other things that we've been running. So um, real quick, we want to give a quick shout out to the homies, Adam with two M's and that's not rap, not with two P's at it. But, and uh, Bruce, <laughs> Bruce went at the best trade kingdom discord server. Uh, if you guys want to check out, they have a free seven day trial for their premium services that, they give out option call outs and technical analysis and all sorts of things like that. Uh, so if you're on discord, just look up the best trade kingdom, uh, BTK. <laughs> uh, and also just shout out to the bag boys discord server as well. That's our server. Uh, it's a little bit more all over the place, but we do have some call outs and shout outs for stocks. And we have, you know, just gaming communities and podcasting and just a bunch of random randomness but it's a good time so come check it out it's a bag boy discord server all the links will be in below the video uh and then jared why don't you real quick you go ahead you said we want to give a quick you were trying to do this earlier i'm gonna let you do it oh yeah so i was trying to do this earlier but i've always wanted to do this on the tiz talk podcast because i don't know why but this moment of the show stands out to me every week but i would love if we could pause for a moment and hear a quick word from our sponsor anchor all right anchor.fm Go check them out to his gang. We wouldn't be here without you. That's for sure. Anchor cut uh, the fucking check, please. <laughs> cut the check. Yeah. Me cut and the Larry check. are thinking about doing a little show um, based on uh, albums that we like, you know, because we like pretty much the oh, same. Yeah. The Tubal, whole fucking Tubal, uh, the Tubal, whole episode. If you're going to uh, do that. P. But- uh ghetto whatever yeah. the fuck what was it the if, ghetto. if y'all if y'all don't uh if y'all want more of a new school rap genius we don't my we room don't. i'm telling you though i'm telling you if you want to do an episode my roommate i don't listen to that my shit. roommate my roommate yeah. knows rap like the back of his hand he knows old shit too but he knows okay. old shit well, maybe we'll give him a try down the road. old shit but first uh, album is going to be Juvenile, 400 Degrees. We're going to break down the New Orleans scene at that time, the whole everything, you know. Cash you know, money. He's from uh, New Orleans, uh, too. Yeah. And so we're going to do cash money. We're going to we're gonna break that shit down scientifically to how you got that sound and how you got. Here's a hot take on, on Juvenile. Probably the hardest uh, most gangster song to ever play on the radio was probably, and I'm not saying it's my favorite song by any means, but I'd say it's probably one of the most ghetto songs to ever play on the radio. Like as a hot top song was "Ha" by Juvenile. Wouldn't you say? Like what? Can Which you think one? Is more Which song? one? Ha, ha. Which song? I'm telling you, huh? Oh, this, oh, the song, huh? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah huh? Yeah, yeah, huh. I was like, your check, huh? you're like, you're like, huh? I'm like, no, dude, tell me. I was like, what? Yeah, huh? Yeah, 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 check, yeah. Huh? Yeah, yeah, you know how to play it, huh? No, yeah, that'll be good. That'll be good. Now your partners is dope fiends, huh? Because y'all did that back and forth shit with fucking God, Master P, and what was the name of that album on the the first YouTube Get episode? Baby, Get O D. It was like nonstop. It was like, and then we'd move on, and then you bring it back up. <laughs> I was like, I mean, holy shit. 
Yeah, I mean, that was funny. And, maybe, I mean, yeah. and I think maybe we should try just like a one topic show, but not about something so esoteric as like EVs, but like, yes, I know, like, like, yeah. like a movie or a, or a fucking, you know, just something. I break don't know something can, down, break something down. Uh, yeah, we can break I, down I, I, I totally, yeah, we, we can, can break can. down 1998. Like, let's break that yeah. shit down. We'll go back to the WWF, Bill Clinton getting his uh, pecker sucked. <laughs> Like, I think that year. would be a hot show, dude. Like episode one, 1990 fucking nine. Like that would be fresh, man. Episode one, let's do the whole 90s. Yeah, 90s. There 98 through 99. Uh, yeah. nine, 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 nine. Uh, well, real quick, I guess. Real, I'm going to do some announcements and shouts. Announcements. I don't really have any announcements other than we're just, you know, continuing to do this thing, podcast as much as the time let us with our other obligations in life but uh i know that tonight for all of you who celebrate hanukkah i believe that started this evening so there's eight more days of that um it started so yesterday another, i'm pretty sure I, maybe it was the second there. night okay well it was one or the other um, i didn't know i didn't know it was that early compared to Christmas. it changes it changes sometimes they line it up it goes off the the whatever calendar yeah the, uh, the old whatever they call oh, it you calendar yeah that one um but yeah so real quick while i was just i'm gonna just give some birthday shout outs real quick um i got uh, my boy a licked lichtenberger adam lichtenberger happy 35th birthday was on the 21st gotta give a big shout out to my younger brother just call just call my younger brother little <laughs> uh, little scrappy a little scrappy, whatever you want to call him. Kimbo Slice, okay? That's what we'll call him. That's what his, his Xbox thing is. Kimbo Slice. So he... Uh, I thought it was Jewosaurus Neck. No, it's Kimbo Slice now. But anyways, anyways, he just turned 20 on the 20th. So he just had... Of November, so he just had his golden birthday, whatever. He, mine was mine was the 21st on October 21st. I turned 21 on my golden... Golden birthday is what they call that. Um, I hope everybody had a good day. Did you get your first get a chain or something what'd you get no i'm like i don't dude i don't even remember <laughs> nobody what gave I, you any gold what i got on my 21st birthday i have no i couldn't tell you i don't remember like Penicillin, as good as good couldn't shake it no yeah <laughs> i was yeah it was one of those you know let's not go back oh hey me. hey this is i'm sorry to interrupt but i'm going to san diego pretty soon what should I do in Tijuana? I mean, it's like really two things to do, that you, or three. Drink cheap beer, uh, eat cheap tacos, and go to the pharmacy to get cheap drugs. Okay. Or go, like or, or go to jail or get arrested and, you know. Or Is there like an out. awesome Mexican restaurant across the border that just no. kicks ass? No, nothing that just like stands out. They're all a bunch of just like local. You have to remember, I haven't been back down there. All of it? Since 2009, maybe yeah. 10. It's maybe been over a decade since I actually went back down to Tijuana, even though oh, I live okay. there. Yeah, like it, it's, it's gotten worse. They've gotten way more strict. They actually check you going into Mexico. Now, like you used to just be able to walk right across. Mexico didn't give a fuck who was coming in. Now they have a whole supposedly like there you got to go through their fucking system too. Like it used to just be coming back in. Yeah, I can go on hey, about like that. You're gonna check us. We're gonna check you. You fucking gringo. Piece I, of and shit. They, you know Logan is the one who's told me about. You know he he said that he still has gone, but not nearly as much as we used to. And and even still, like he's like yeah, he's like eh, it's the same shit. I mean you know he's but. I don't think as many people are going down there anymore. I mean, Rosarito is a 20 minute cab ride from the, from Tijuana. You just walk across, hail a cab. It's 20 minutes near Rosarito, which is a way more chill beach town. Tijuana is chill, but it's also, so is Rosarito can also be really a dangerous place as well. But I'm just saying. I'm, it's not going to be nighttime. I was just going to go for a day. You know, uh, we used to do, go there all night, dude. We would stay out and party all night, bro. That shit was Hey, wild. if you want to join me, I'll be there in December for like three weeks. I don't know if I'll be able to pull that one, man. I really don't. If I can, I will, but I just don't see it happening. Uh, you know, just three weeks? Three weeks? 
three weeks i'll, I'll be gone for if i come least. out there i'm not coming for a fucking day or two i'd be going out there for at least a week you know like i'm All chilling right, well, but i just i'll say megan and you know mama me and megan shout out mama me and megan and boy steven they just got engaged well not just but six months ago uh anyway san diego fam so anyways as we were wrapping up the uh announcements and shouts and birthday party or birthday shout outs and then uh it's the last thing i was saying it's <laughs> can't even remember um and just we're gonna do something a little different to end this show tonight we're not ending it just quite yet but the stupid headlines of the week that their dumb ass is doing dumb shit is what it is really so i was getting we... some headlines <laughs> I was getting some headlines <laughs> i didn't even see always dude always crushing it with this all right this... now Last one. I'm going to read the title. Y'all can say whatever you want about it. I'm going to talk about it for a second because I witnessed this live. Not in person, but as it was happening. Cash scattered across a Southern California freeway sent drivers into a frenzy. This happened. Oh, man. That would have been a really bad joke. Um... We can always edit it out. <laughs> Where was this? Where did this happen? Southern California. I'm just reading the title of it. I know more about it. I'm reading the title of it to you. It says... Yo, is this a strip it- club? No, nah, that's just a Brinks truck. <laughs> that's okay. <laughs> a Brinks. So- California socialism makes freeway pay you. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that was, that was good. Okay. So this was, um, uh, it was last week or maybe it was like the, the Friday of before last, you know, and I was, uh, I was working from home. I always have the same guy on the screen or the same YouTube live channel as he's got like all these different stock screeners up. He's he never shows his face, but he's talking. He streams live every day throughout the entire market being open. He's telling the trades he's getting into all this stuff, but, and you know, whenever fucking Biden comes on and talks or something, I don't have to like, you know, go to CNBC. It's like, he just puts it on. Yeah. You know? So it's like, I know it's like, it's like, Oh shit. The video's popping. The video's, you know, so everybody like starts right. You know, it's like, I'm right there. Like, Oh shit. What's going on? Like, you know, hop, get in now. This guy knows what he's doing. But anyways, he's like, Holy shit. You know, he gets like, he's like on his cell phone on his damn, you can hear him. And he's like, dude, he's like, man, guys, like this, it's crazy. He's like, I'm going to, He's like, I'm going to try to find this video like online. And dude, so this dude lives in San Diego. This happened in like the Carlsbad area, which is like about 30 minutes north. It's in the North County San Diego on I-5, Interstate 5, which is like the busiest freeway in California, 100%. It goes from Tijuana all the way up to Seattle or into Canada. But it goes all the way and it runs through LA. It goes through San Diego. So this is in North County, San Diego. I don't know exactly what happened because I was watching this shit. Like people's like, you know, just running. You could see people live, like just, pick, just scrambling, picking up all this money, cash over on the freeway. And this is like, you now it's like shutting 610 down in Houston, bro. Or, you know, it's, yeah. it's, it's big time, like big time shit. There's a lot of movement on that freeway. So I'm going to read a little bit about it because I'm curious exactly what happened. Traffic so came, so, so they, they say it never rains in Southern California. There you go. They make it rain on the highway. <laughs> <laughs> they, they made it rain in San Diego. That's for sure. Uh, let's see. The, okay. So here's what happened. Jared, your joke came into play here. Traffic came to a stop <clears throat> uh, on Interstate 5 Friday morning uh, after an armored car happened to spill cash across the freeway just north of San Diego. Several drivers and passengers jumped out of their vehicles to grab what they could, but the police want it all back. Of course they do. Want it all back. The armored car was traveling north along the Interstate 5 in Carlsbad around 9.15 a.m. when one of the doors unexpectedly swung open and bags of cash flew out. Cars parked on the shoulder and in the middle of the road as motorists and passengers raced to collect the bills, mostly ones and 20s (laughs) 
and there's just pictures of these people just holding like all these ones and twenties on the side of. I saw this shit. I mean, like on the guy's channel, it was insane because he's from the area. I was just like, holy fuck, dude. You know, so um there's videos all you gotta do is to get, look it up on youtube i guarantee you'll find i'm sure that bring whatever company brings whoever it was i'm sure they have insurance on that shit oh i'm sure oh, yeah they, yeah I'm fucking they were piecing positive. together all the social media shots and trying to figure out who was there and all that shit finders keepers i mean you blow a bag on the highway like you deserve to lose that shit i'm sorry oh yeah for sure i mean how the fuck does that i mean you don't hear about that happening all the time. Uh, basically, uh, let's see. So the California Highway Patrol and the FBI are working together to identify those who may not have turned back the money, turned back in the money. Who the fuck is going to do it? Who's going to turn it back in? And how do you Why know you how much back? they didn't turn in? How do the you know fuck? this amount was exactly. this person? You know what that reminds me of? It was the when the fucking cops up in Northern California, I talked about this in one of the way earlier episodes of the Tiz Talk podcast, and they were like telling the meth heads or the meth dealers to bring their fucking meth to the police station <laughs> because it could be contaminated with coronavirus and that they should come and get it tested at the fucking station. And it's like, <laughs> who the fuck is going to be that stupid? And first of all, go bring the meth. It, you know, so that's what that reminds me of. It's like, who's going to fucking... Co- willingly just confess oh i hear here's what i took like no they don't know who did it they're never gonna fucking find you i mean i don't know there's a lot of fucking phones going around and shit these days facial recognition shit you know what i mean yeah exactly but uh anyway, hey, so that, the freeway was down for two hours by the way that's i'm gonna leave it at that cash dude there was people stopping on the i mean once that shit stops nice. think about yeah, how backed yeah. up that shit goes dude yeah. all the way to fucking orange county in there yeah or whatever direction it was go- it was going north. So I guess everything backed all the way to San Diego, like into the city. But anyways, I just so I came across that. And I was like, holy shit, I definitely saw that happening live on TV or like on that show. That's uh, that's it. That was kind of a fun little segment. I thought it was. You, name, name another news story. I just didn't feel good about any of that. I mean, no. I, I, Oh, you mean just the titles? We're going back to Yeah, let's just hear a title or two. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) They don't even have to be the catchiest. I think the non-catchiest, you know what I mean? You get to put together more with a non-catchy title. And when you were just telling me to just go right through them real quick. Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm saying. But don't pick and choose. Just. I mean, okay. That's okay. All right. Let me just go. We already went through most of these. Uh, Let me kind of get a little fresh here. All right. So I'll do like. Couple, so a little bit more of these. All right, I'm gonna go. Uh, Arizona's man, Arizona man's Letterman jacket turns up at the thrift store after 28 years of missing, being missing. He still tells women about how he scored five touchdowns at Polk High. <laughs> I like that Polk High. <laughs> so what the fuck? Where'd you get that from? Polk High. Uh, married with children. Oh, God, typical man. dude, typical dude peaks in high school. <laughs> Uncle Rico <laughs> finds jacket. Uncle Rico. Oh man. Uh 536 dancers break Guinness record for longest soul train ride. Soul train line, sorry. Soul train line. <laughs> Pulling new you- story, pulling new stories out of the archives from the seventies. <laughs> I thought you were gonna. I thought someone was gonna go in a different direction with this one, like you know, running a train or some shit like that. <laughs> oh god! Our content is drier than the Sahara, says Guinness World Record spokesperson Mancy Jajosi. Guinness. What? Oh, yeah. Wait, is that what you said? No, no, no. Yeah, Guinness record for longest soul train line. Mm-hmm. <laughs> okay. No, we get to keep going on this end. Um, I think we should do oh, one more and then wrap it up. Yeah, yeah. Okay, then let me – okay, I'll pick one then. Uh, let's do <laughs> – man cited for driving a motorized cooler without a license. Bish, this Louisiana <laughs> – <laughs> <I was thinking> <laughs> <that>. <laughs> yeah. 
That's bitch, this ain't a this ain't a cooler bitch. This is a Yeti. I think that, yeah, that, that's the winner. That's the winner. So we have to click the article and kind of get some more details on it because that was the best one, I think. I think. Uh, uh, so, okay, so police in Australia. This is in Australia with crazy Aussies. Said a man was cited for driving without a license, and officers confiscated his unusual vehicle, a motorized cooler. There is a photo of it. I'll share the screen real quick so you can see it, guys. <laughs> this is the fucking thing. <laughs> this is too good. Can y'all see this shit? Nope. Yep. I don't oh, know. nice. <laughs> that thing looks like it can rip a little bit. How do you yeah. steer it? Yeah. Just that so little shit at, in the front. I don't know. Right? The fuck? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I was looking at it the wrong way. So, anyway, so... <laughs> uh, the Swan Hill police service said the officers stopped a 25 year old man who was spotted driving a motorized cooler, as you can see, in Kerrang, Victoria, province of Australia. Fosters, it's Australian Fosters. for wheels. Yeah, that's a good one, too. Uh, a photo posted to Facebook. Put, well, I don't need to keep reading, you guys can see it, but that's basically the gist of it. Officer said the cooler was impounded for 30 days and the man was cited for driving without a fucking license. <laughs> cooler heads don't prevail. The Facebook post said that the cooler, wait, the cooler is considered a vehicle due to the size slash engine capacity and must comply with legislative requirements and road rules. <laughs> Australia, man. That's the land down under for you. Okay. Um, all right. That's the end of that segment. Hope you guys enjoyed that one. We'll uh, try and do that uh, some more. We'll have to get a little bit more creative. How do I stop this? So anyways, um, I think we're going to kind of come to a close here. We were a little heavy on the EV, but uh, it's all good. That was all good stuff. I think we definitely put our opinions out there on what we think is maybe coming inevitably who the fuck knows man it's all crazy it's the meta you know the metaverse is this big thing nfts metaverse this it's like this digital fuck world i mean facebook changing their name to meta i just like don't it's so dumb it's the so biggest it's, joke in all of but now we're in the history. Army. Now we're in the omniverse. Yeah, well, now we're in the <laughs> omniverse. We are. Omni, they are Omni, they are. Omniverse. Omniverse. Yeah. Sorry. And see, the, yeah, the metaverse is the biggest joke perpetrated in the last 10 years. I mean, it's it doesn't exist. Graphics suck still when you talk about 3D shit. You know what I mean? Like anything that's cool now in the metaverse will never be cool in 10 years. And what's Look cool in the metaverse 10 years now ago. is not cool today. Remember 10 years ago, like what was what was cool 10 years ago as far as video games? An going? iPod. Yeah, exactly. well, where I yeah, I guess like the iPod touch. Yeah, they were we were beyond the iPod at that point. Yeah, now that motherfucker's just called a phone. I mean, that shit's lame as hell. You know, and you know what's crazy? These phones, these fucking iPhones, man, they cost as much as the you know, almost the MacBook area, like a laptop. I mean, I don't even these days. The because I am tis gang, I'm fucking they got me by the balls. Apples got me by the balls, literally by the apples. Yeah, by the apples. Yeah. Now, God damn it. You always fucking get come up with the good cracks. By the apples, they got me, literally yeah. Apple. Because every fucking device I have is an Apple device. Basically, I have two phones, a fucking iPad, I got a uh, uh, I have MacBook Air, I got the Mac Mini, I got the, the AirPods, I got the watch. You know, one text message goes through or email. I mean, it goes to all my fucking devices. I just, I'm, I'm stuck. I can't transfer over. I don't want to, but I can't. They I got can't. him by the Granny Smiths. I mean, yeah. imagine this is. <laughs> what was I going on? It? Where was I going with that? I'm sorry. I, I, Apple's got you by the balls. Um, no, I know, but I was. Oh, I was. What was cool ten years ago? As I was saying. I mean, yeah. Anyways, go ahead, go ahead. We were talking about the metaverse. Where, where were you? Go ahead. Apple's where kind you? of a funny symbol. If you think about what Apple does, and then what the Apple bitten out of Apple symbolizes, it's kind of trippy. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, they collect all the data basically in the world and fucking compile it. You know what I mean? And and then the bite out of Apple well, is like. Oh, 
Google the that's what they call Fang F A A N G. It's face well Meta now Facebook yes. Apple. Uh wait. Al- well, Net, Alphabet. Net, Net, oh, Alphabet, Netflix, Netflix, and Google. Yes. Which is well, Alphabet. Alphabet is Google. So, so wait, wait. So, I can look it up. Well, either way, that's what that terminology. Yeah, yeah. It always confused me. I was like, wait, are they talking about Fang? Like, you know, fucking Diamondback Energy Fang? Yeah. Uh, it always screwed with my head, dude. I was like, because I was big on that stock. You know, but just dinner. think about the Apple, man. So, Oh, here I'm, not a, I'm not a religious guy, but you know, the bite out of the apple is like when humans gained consciousness. We forgot one major player. Think about it for a second. It starts with an A. Amazon? Yeah. Amazon, Amazon. yeah. It's, uh, Amazon. Yeah. So it's, Alphabet. it's Facebook, Amazon, Apple, Netflix, Google. Okay. So it should be Alphabet, but it's Google. Well, but there, well, yeah, it says Alphabet. Yeah, yeah. But I got their you. ticker, their ticker yeah, is yeah. Google. So, yeah. yeah. Anyways, but yeah, so should we wrap it up? Just, yeah, that's what we're doing. But no, good fucking point, honestly. Let me and, ask you a question, real quick question. This is a good way to wrap up this. Is if you, uh, you know, I'm not a single dude, so I don't know what it's, you know, like yeah, talking yeah. to random right. chicks these days. But say a chick pulls out an Android, are you kind of like, eh? Is uh, it kind of like, uh, um, green text? Green text. It's the first thing that comes yeah. to my mind. I remember Stiz was saying that shit. He's like, yeah. you got that fucking group, that one guy. If a dude texts me from an hour, I enjoyed I'd feel like I'd be like, yeah, whatever. But a chick should get really have an apple. Yeah, a chick right? should have an apple. Okay. No, no, I agree. I agree. I think that's hilarious. I, I'm glad that you brought that up. If that's... she wants to be a lady... She needs yeah. to have an Apple phone. Now, if you want to be a tramp, then have an Android. Do whatever you want. But And that's – I'm not going to say too much, but I feel like that kind of is the way it is, right? Like, isn't it? Yeah. For yeah. the most part. I swear yeah. to God. Oh, man. Um, <laughs> so that was – oh, to answer the question, sorry uh, – I don't go out that much these days anymore. Um, but the old Tiz, who was going out a lot, I can tell you right now, probably wouldn't have cared if I was attracted to her in any way, shape, or form physically. Um, these days, I'm a little bit more like aware of these types of things, and it might bother me a little bit. You know, yeah, getting green text, and you know, just like. Mm. Yeah, you just be like, ooh, like, what's going on here? Like, is life not as good as I thought it was for this person? Or is yeah, all the Samsung fucking people are gonna fucking give me so much? Are shit they on drugs? Is there like that's what I would think? I'm like, they must be on drugs. They couldn't afford the Apple, so they it's their burner phone. Android, you know, it's a burner phone. <laughs> it's yeah, a it's burner a burner phone. exactly. <laughs> and some people have burner phones, and they're actually iPhones. Like, what the fuck? Like, How oh, is that? My she's name? She's got a burner for her pimp who sends her on calls. I get it. Okay. Yeah, there we go. Right? Okay. No, good. That was a good one to wrap it up, man. I, <laughs> I, I think it definitely would affect my decision if I haven't had too many to drink. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Um, yeah, I don't know. how. It, it really, I think it's going to be a case by case on that one. Uh, but anyways, yeah, let's go ahead and wrap this up. Please, you know, like and subscribe on Apple's podcast, Spotify. And if you like what you hear and you've been part of the, you've been rolling with the Tiz fam, Tiz gang for quite some time now. And now we're on YouTube. Go check out the YouTube channel. The links are on, on the, in the description and, you know. We're trying to ramp the, the YouTube channel up a little bit. And, you know, I think you guys will find it pretty amusing. You get to actually see us. We do some pretty goofy stuff, you know. But, um, but yeah, check it out. Do your duties, uh, you know. And then I guess, I mean, I, I'll give my peace out. I guess I'll do it last if you guys have anything. I can to go say. first. Oh, and real quick. Well, I'll say it. I was going to just give my Instagram handles and TikTok crap out, but that's going to be all in the bio description anyway. So, go ahead. All, all right. right. Go ahead, Jared. Or go ahead, Jared. Right. Get it and flip it. If you can't flip it, then flop it. 
And if you gonna flop it, then you gonna fumble it. But if your mind ain't correct, then humble it. Uh, it's the freestyle here. I thought he was gonna be like, yeah, the whole stiz, uh, holler at the stiz for honor. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> it's kind of going in that direction. Oh, uh, I heard a woman on TikTok go viral with that toast. And see, he, I knew he didn't make it up. Him was watching it. And she was like, oh, listen. And I was like, I tis, I'm oh, no. tis nation every week. Like, I don't need to hear that. <laughs> Is it? That's so funny. Oh, my yeah, God. It's going a little, it's blowing up a little bit. All right, Dude. Daddy Stacks out. I'm going to go get my food. All right, Daddy Stacks. Thanks for being on the show. Peace. I was just going to sign off with a, with a, you know, um, for some reason, when you said wrap it up, it reminded me of this quick little quip. It was on TikTok. They were doing street interviews and they're like, oh, what's like a crazy sexual story that you can think of? And he goes, he goes, I was having my first threesome and I didn't know, which I didn't think about this. But he goes, I didn't know, like, you should take off the condom and put a different one on for each lady, which I bet nobody does. But he goes, <laughs> uh, he had the threesome. With the condom on and banged both women with the same condom, and then they both got an STD from one of the women, and he didn't. Oh <laughs> shit! He goes, what? he goes. That was between them, and I just thought that was an awesome like. <laughs> whoa, whoa! Yeah. That's crazy. That holy shit! Wow, condoms. So, they actually work, guys. They were so multiple levels here. If you're having a threesome, if you're really on top of your game and polite, you should wear a different condom for each woman if you're thinking that far ahead. But then number two, <laughs> then just enjoy the story, number two. But, you know, just remember that. That was, that was a good one, man. I yeah. was – where did you hear this? It was a street interview on, like, some TikTok page. <laughs> wow. That, that, and the guy was that like, something that we shouldn't talk about random stories like from the well yeah that's great that is a good one wow yeah the, you know you never think i never thought about that actually I, I never thought about that never did i ever um some dirty girls man one of them was at least <laughs> uh <laughs> well anyways i'm not gonna be repetitive this time i'll leave the whole tis and stiz for honor thing alone tonight and just keep it brief i'll go with my usuals and um yeah basically come on guys you know what i always say get your mind correct and then once you get your mind correct keep your mind correct because that's the hardest part is keeping your mind correct and speaking of keeping your mind correct i just always want to just touch and not to steal another quote from ross but when my homie or whatever but uh you know mental health it's always it's become more of something I've become more aware of for personal reasons. It's like they at least mention it at the end of every show or talk about it during the show. Uh, yeah. If you're struggling, you know, you are not alone. It's part of the reason I fucking started doing this podcast. Okay. So you're not alone. You're not the only one. If I was like the last, I would have never thought I maybe could have ever suffered from fucking panic attack. Okay. But I did. And it's like happening sort of again recently, like a month ago, sort of, I caught it and chilled and went home or just saying like, that was something that was like, not like I never dealt with. I, I, I don't know if it's all just kind of just coming out now. Cause I was like shoveled shit under, but all I'm getting at is, is Tiz gang. You're not alone reach out to somebody talk it fucking helps it really does like this podcast i don't this would maybe be a stretch but it in a way sort of changed my mental demeanor and kind of saved my life in a sense for some of the shit i probably would have been doing if i wasn't doing this god honest truth nice. thank you thank you anchor yeah <laughs> hold them down like the anchor yeah, uh, but shout out to Ross Bullen. If you guys don't watch his, listen to his podcast, it's the Ross Bullen podcast. Basically, one of my friends and inspirations to do this, and, and also as well in the first place. Uh, you know, one but, uh, one other thing about mental health too is like, say you happen to actually be alone in a bad spot, like you know, don't talk to yourself too. I mean, I think people like avoid themselves. You know what I mean? Like, 
distractions, drugs, alcohol, TV. We just, it's so easy to distract yourself with shit these days. And sometimes the best conversation you can have is with yourself. Just don't run away from yourself and fill in your head with a bunch of just crap, you know? It's so true, man. It's super true. Cause like I've spent more time alone and, and not in a bad way. Like I'm just more content with it these days. Just to, I don't, like you said, I am a single guy. Like I don't, but I don't go out. I'm not like chasing after anything. Honestly, I'm just chasing after what I, my goals are right now. And if I, yeah, you don't always have up. to be with friends every minute. And, you and know, it, yeah. but that was the way it was. It yeah. had to be like that. I was like FOMO motherfucker. I had to be yeah. very busy now. But I go into more stories on the next episode, guys. So tune in. We'll be back hopefully in the next you know week or two. Try to keep it somewhat consistent. But thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. And uh, please just hit the subscribe, hit that like button. And Tiz Gang, we at you. Uh, episode 37, I think, I, or 36. I don't know. We've it, Regardless, we're out of here. Too well. Thanks for being on the show, man. Have a good night, dude. I will uh, talk to you tomorrow. Talk to you All tomorrow. right, man. See you in the Omniverse. I know. The Omniverse, baby. Oh. Omniverse. Yeah, man. That's the Tiz Talk Podcast.